This is the large scale Drupal, the open source way. Um, it's a pretty small group, so um, I'd love to do a quick little bit of audience feedback to know what your interest areas are. I'm curious uh, who here is from, say, a services company or a partner that does development for Drupal. Maybe uh, raise the hands, All right? Uh, and who here is working with an organization um, that leverages Drupal for like a main property? Two, three, awesome, okay. Um, so please feel free to jump in. I'll make this as interactive as possible because it's a pretty small group. Uh, my name is Michael Myers. I run the large scale Drupal program uh, out of Acquia's office as a CTO. I work for Drees uh, alongside amazing <coughs> folks like Angie Byard and Moshe Weitzman. Uh, we focus on things like fostering innovation, long term strategy, the Drupal core project, engaging the community, uh, and fostering innovation in Drupal. Um, there's a lot of people here. See if that's any better. All right. So as I'm sure you guys are well aware, behind uh, the Drupal software platform, there is a really vibrant community. This is one of the biggest success factors for Drupal. You know, uh, in addition to you know, millions of websites running Drupal, we have a really large talent base, over a million users on Drupal.org, uh, over 10,000 contributed modules, you know, uh, over 1,000 core developers. Um, it's a really vibrant ecosystem of individuals. You know, um, we are one of the most uh, successful and one of the largest open source projects with respect to our contributor base. Uh, and so it's a pretty exciting community to be a part of. Um, but to put things into context, less than 1% of the organizations that download and run Drupal are actually contributing back to the platform. Um, and this is very common for every platform. It's a fraction of 1% for something like Linux, right? And so, you know, the bigger, the more distribution you have of your platform, obviously the smaller percentage of uh, contributors you're going to have. Uh, so this is actually a very large number for an open source project. Uh, but what we'd like to do is we'd like to make this number significantly larger because this is where a lot of the value comes from in Drupal. Um, and so, you know, when I talk to uh, many organizations, I ask them, you know, why do you adopt Drupal and open source technologies? And they cite many factors like the ability to glue together a bunch of modules, expedite their time to market, the fact they don't have to reinvent the wheel, um, and of course, you know, the community, right? But what we see is that when organizations adopt the Drupal platform, uh, they don't necessarily understand how open source works, how to get engaged in an open source community, and invariably what we see is that organizations work in proprietary fashions once they adopt and download open source software packages. And so what we see is that they make these amazing innovations to the platform, but they don't share them with anybody else. They don't contribute them back to the community uh, because they don't know how to navigate the Drupal community. Oftentimes they don't realize that a solution for their problem already exists. And so they go out and they reinvent the wheel. And this is a very wasteful process for the organizations. And it's terrible for the Drupal community because we're not capitalizing on these amazing innovations that everybody has created. And that is essentially the reason that they adopted the software. And so Acquia created this program called Large Scale Drupal. Uh, it's a strategic alliance for organizations where Drupal is an important part of your digital strategy. And what we want to do is we want to show organizations that there is a significantly better way to go about building software that is more economical and uh, going to create better software. So we focus on two major areas that I'll talk about. We talk about uh, networking, knowledge sharing, education, and community engagement. We want to show organizations, you know, through peer interaction that you can be very successful, that there is a really smart business reason for taking this approach and give you great use cases. Um, and we want to help you navigate across that spectrum from adopting open source projects to getting engaged in them and understanding how it's going to help you with your business. Um, and what we see is that organizations who do adopt these methodologies, organizations that do get involved in the community, that change the way they work, get a significantly better return on their investment. You know, um, your investment in technology is going to last significantly longer, so you're gonna get a better return on that investment, and you're gonna drive down your total cost of ownership because you're gonna be working with a community of individuals that are gonna be helping create and uh, enhance your solution, right? Uh, many organizations look at just the upfront build costs and they forget about the long-term support and maintenance costs of software, which is where the majority of the cost and time is spent. And so 
Um, by leveraging these practices and principles, what we can do is we can work together, we can create an economy of scale, we can share those cost savings, we can share best practices, and we can help each other be more successful. So I'll give you some examples of, of how this works and how we're helping companies. Uh, the quintessential example is Views. Uh, are you guys all familiar with Views? Show of hands, you guys. Yep. Cool. Views, single most popular contributed module in the Drupal ecosystem. Uh, six or seven years ago, Sony Music, uh, they had all of their artists running on Drupal. They were paying a lot of money to development teams to update all of these websites, and they had an epiphany, which now seems like you know common sense. You know, what if we could empower the brands, you know, the the managers of these bands, the band themselves, to manage and update these websites? What if we didn't have to pay a development team to do all of this? And rather than build this in a proprietary fashion, they said we're going to do this in an open source way. And they funded Earl Miles, Merle Michaelas. Uh, to work on this openly and publicly in the community from the start. And what they saw is that they got a significantly better return on their investment. Organizations over the years came in and they did maser usabil uh, us usability and research studies. You know, they looked at a very complex system and they said, how can we make this simpler and easier to use, which every organization wants. Uh, companies like Acquia came in and created Simple Views UI. Again, taking complex systems, making them simpler. Uh, individuals came in and submitted bug fixes, feature enhancements. It's been upgraded from 4 to 5 to 6 to Drupal 7. And in Drupal 8, it's being moved into the core of the platform. And so, you know, it really paints a stark picture here in the sense that, you know, had Sony tried to do this in a pro proprietary fashion, had they contributed the same amount of money as this ecosystem of contributors had, I would reason that they would not have created as good of a solution. And so, you know, not only do they have to make a comparatively small investment compared to the value that they got out of this system, but I don't think that as an individual organization, you could achieve this on your own. And so, this is essentially the methodology that we're trying to get organizations to adopt in the way that they work. I'll give you an example of how we work. Uh, we have over 31 organizations that are participating in the program currently across many industries and sectors. Um, you know, uh, what we see are many media and entertainment companies, for example, who recognize that technology is a cost center for them and there is extreme value in working together. We have several pharmaceutical companies. You know, th these are not technology companies. The reason they adopt a platform like Drupal is that they don't have to go out and build their own open source CMS. And so they see tremendous value in working together so that they have more money and resources to dedicate towards their competitive differentiating factor, their content, you know, their, their pharmaceutical research and their drugs. I also want to point out that we are not a profit center for Acquia. Uh, this is run uh, where in such a way where all of the money we raise from a member contribution goes back to running the program, all the money over break even, we uh, reinvest back into the Drupal community. This is about a rising tide lifting all boats. You know, we really want to help uh, organizations, you know, uh, educate them and change the way that they work so that they can benefit from these systems. You know, we believe that, you know, Drupal is an amazing platform, and we want to make sure that 10, 15 years into the future, we continue to accelerate that pace of innovation and ensure that your investment in this technology platform is going to last. And that's what Acquia gets out of this, is, you know, our, our customers, our clients, our partners, the entire ecosystem benefits by more organizations understanding the value and the benefit of open source software, why you'd want to participate. And so, you know, we take the money and we reinvest it back into the program. Uh, I'll, I'll talk through the networking, knowledge sharing, education side of things first, and I'll talk a little bit about the software projects. Uh, we run a lot of events. Uh, so earlier this week, we ran our quarterly leadership conference. We typically co-locate these with major conferences like a DrupalCon. And that's because we want organizations to get engaged with and participate in open source communities. One of the biggest challenges I hear from organizations is we can't find Drupal talent. Uh, and they say, well, we put up a job on our job board, you know, but great Drupal talent is coming to Drupal events. And they want to go work for organizations that are innovating and doing great things with the platform. And so what we've seen with our members is that by coming to DrupalCon, showing up at presentations, you know, giving presentations, letting your, you know, developers know the exciting and innovative things that you're doing with technology and showing them that you're willing to do this in an open source fashion, you know, meaningfully solves those problems. You know, um, uh, a company like NBC Universal, for example, many years ago had a very hard time finding talent 
And by getting engaged in the community, they have an amazing group of talent now that they've built up over the years. And so, you know, th this can be a, a huge differentiating factor. Uh, at our quarterly membership conferences, uh, we bring in the technology and product leadership from our member organizations. We bring in Drupal community leaders, and we present business cases. So uh, Mike Lamb at Pfizer, who's the Director of Marketing Technology and Strategy, will talk about how by adopting open source practices and principles, they've been able to drop their costs significantly by as much as 50 or 60 percent and roll things out 40 percent faster. And they'll talk about, you know, not just their successes, but their challenges along the way and the catalyst for success. You know, how did we achieve this? And how can you leverage and adopt these principles? Um, we also run local events in key cities around the world where uh, they're more informal. A lot of our members say, you know, look, there's all these amazing conferences that we can come to, we can hear from Drupal community leaders. We also want opportunities to network with and talk to each other so that we can share our roadmaps, our plans, our interests, and coordinate and strategize and figure out how to solve these challenges. And so we hold things like networking nights in cities like New York, London, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Sydney uh, on a quarterly basis uh, to create this local community. Drupal has an awesome hacker culture. There's Drupal drinks here in London Monday night. There's Drupal Camp London this weekend. You know, we need more uh, opportunities and places where uh, the technology, marketing, digital strategy leadership can come together and talk about how they're solving their challenges and problems with these technology platforms. Um, we also do quarterly hackathons. So we, uh, this is a new thing we started this year. Uh, we had our LSDQ1 event uh, earlier this week, uh, and it really exceeded my expectations. We were able to bring in uh, developers from our member organizations and, uh, you know, here in the UK of organizations like Pfizer, Dennis Publishing, Cancer Research, Alcatel-Lucent, and we were able to, to get developers working together in cross-functional teams, uh, meaningfully solving problems that we have paired up with leaders in the Drupal community. So one of the projects we did was on performance tuning. Uh, Wim Lears, very well-known individual in the Drupal community behind the Spark project, led a team on performance tuning. Uh, they sped up the cancer research site by something like 37%. They taught the team how to do the performance re you know, research, how to identify the problems. They chose a couple of problems to fix together. Uh, the, uh, the Syed Business School at Oxford University achieved an 80% gain in their site speeds. And they walked away with a laundry list of improvements that they can continue to make with that knowledge that they gained working together. Other teams upgraded modules from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 and started learning about the future of the platform. Uh, and, you know, it was pretty exciting to see, you know, individuals say, you know, I didn't think I could contribute to the Drupal community, which is something I hear a lot. You know, there are so many amazing people, sometimes you feel like there's a barrier to entry. Um, and it was really exciting to see an individual say, you know, I, I didn't think I could contribute. I submitted my first patch today, and now that I know I can, I'm really looking forward to contributing more in the future. And hopefully these individuals have established relationships that will go beyond, you know, their time together. And they'll reach out to each other and begin working together. Um, we also uh, have access to the usability and research teams at Acquia, so we send our teams into member organizations, uh, both virtually, we did a, a virtual research study with Cancer Research recently, we've sent people physically into organizations like University of California, San Francisco. This is where we sit down and we look at how you're using Drupal and the tools and products that are built on top of the platform to understand, you know, from the user standpoint, the, the strengths and weaknesses and how we can work together as a community to improve these things, right? Because no matter how awesome we think Drupal is, technology can always be better, and you know, users always use technology different than we anticipate when we build it. And so this gives us you know, unique insight that we can take back to developers to help make the system better. In addition to hackathons and these leadership conferences, we also have a webinar series. This is targeted at the development teams at member organizations, and what we want to do is we want to introduce your development team to community leaders, folks like the head of the Drupal security team to understand what is the Drupal security team and how does it work and how do you stay abreast of vulnerabilities, how do you report a vulnerability, what are the top ten vulnerabilities that most commonly surface and how do you look for and address them. Uh, we recently had Dries come in and talk about the new release cycle for Drupal 8. I'm curious who here is familiar with the changes to the Drupal 8 release cycle and the future of Drupal. One or two individuals, three individuals. So, you know, this is an opportunity where we can surface, you know, very important changes to the Drupal platform to stakeholders that ordinarily would not be aware of these things, right? Uh, personally, I, I don't spend a lot of time in the issue queues of Drupal. You know, had they not brought this up, I, you know, I would not have been aware of it. And so this is an opportunity for 
Dries and many of the leaders in the Drupal community to walk through their plan of how we're going to move the future of Drupal to incremental release cycles. So instead of going from Drupal 6 to 7 over many years, we're going to incrementally release Drupal on a more um, you know, iterative and agile fashion moving forward. And we walk through why we made these decisions, our assumptions, why we thought this was beneficial to different organizations and constituencies. And there's an opportunity for them to sanity check this. You know, do, are our assumptions correct? Is this something that you know, is going to meaningfully help your organization? And do you believe that this is good for the platform and the direction that we're moving? And so we, you know, we have an opportunity to provide feedback and input to key stakeholders to help them make more informed decisions and to bring interesting topics you know, that are highly relevant to our, our member organizations to give you an opportunity to participate in the Drupal community. Um, one thing I want to point out is that um, while we focus a lot on Drupal, uh, Drupal is really just what brings us together. So to be truly successful with your technology, it's about much more than technology. It's about business processes, team structures, it's about best practices. You know, you're reliant on an entire stack of technology, not just Drupal. And so, uh, you know, it's important that we talk about uh, all of these aspects so that, you know, you know, your tools are only as good as your ability to use them. And, and, and frankly, uh, I see most organizations fail, not because of the underlying tools and technologies, but because of the challenges in changing the way they work as an organization or adopting and implementing new technologies. And so this is an opportunity for us to help organizations do that. Uh, in addition to the knowledge sharing, the networking, and education, a major focus of the group is on collaborative software projects. So through things like our quarterly events, uh, we had a collaborative breakout session where we went around the room and we asked every executive in, in attendance, you know, what is on your 2014 roadmap and plans? You know, what are the highest priority items to you? What are your key concerns and what are you focused on? And then we had everyone get up, we had each, um, a single member uh, from each uh, organization get up and vote. We tallied the votes and we figured out, you know, the most common areas that people are interested in. And then we held deeper dive discussions around those areas. And that's important because this helps us uh, surface things that we can address at future hackathons topics that we can bring speakers to talk at our webinars, uh, and also identifies funding opportunities, ways, you know, areas that we can go out and raise money so that we can, you know, enable our members to collectively come together and solve these problems so that no one individual organization has to, you know, pay for these, as well as creating a community of contributors around it to support that long-term maintenance and support. Um, so we take these areas, uh, I'm, I'm curious if any of these resonate with you. Uh, some of the things I con constantly hear about are things like content authoring. You know, Drupal is a great technology platform. You know, Drupal 7 right now with its preview, it doesn't have WYSI, true WYSIWYG. It has kind of a lame preview out of the box. Uh, you can't do inline contextual editing out of the box. A lot of the Spark initiative was created to address these particular problems. Another area, mobile, you know, more and more of your audience is moving to mobile devices. It's critical that you're not only able to, you know, uh, surf your site online on a mobile device, but also to edit your site, to be able to administer your site. And so, you know, some of the Spark improvements have addressed that as well, so there's overlap between these areas. Um, we've also released an SDK for iPhones. So, again, going well beyond Drupal, not only did we release the APIs to communicate with a mobile device, but we've literally released a, uh, an example application on iPhone that one of our, our members funded through a professional service engagement so that if you as an organization want to do a mobile app, you now have a reference platform and implementation to follow, which will hopefully save you a lot of pain and mistakes. Um, another major area is content staging. Many organizations want to be able to preview large sets of changes before they go live. Uh, I'll talk through this in more detail in a little bit. We did a great project around this. Um, and then of course, you know, most organizations are interested in things like performance and scalability, security, and DevOps. Um, you know, there, there are many, many more areas, but these are some of the things that, that typically bubble up to the top. Um, we take on a lot of different types of collaborative projects. I'll walk through a couple of examples, but you know, we can help you accelerate and fund existing Drupal initiatives. We can take on proprietary needs like something like content staging that maybe no one organization can tackle or no one is you know, working on as a group. Uh, we help organizations adopt many of the practices and principles that have made open source so successful and leverage them internally. And I can give you some great examples of that. We also want to help uh, 
you know, individuals within a company be more successful. Not only are you trying to solve the same technology problems, but you have to navigate your own corporate culture, your own organization, and you need to be empowered to sell and, and, and communicate the value of these tools. We want to make your job easier in doing that, and so we share how we go about that. And we also do uh, a lot of collaborative things. Irrespective of the type of project, one of the great things that an organization like Large Scale Drupal can do is, you know, we have uh, access and insight to what's going on in the future, you know, in the community. We have access to amazing resources that would love to be paid full time to work on Drupal projects, and we can act as a coordinating body to ensure that the needs of your individual organization are met in addition to the group. And so, you know, I, I think we provide a tremendous amount of oversight and value. Uh, I mentioned earlier the content staging solution. Uh, there are several solutions that we have that we're working on. Uh, I'll talk through one of them, but basically, you know, in, in one of these collaborative sessions we did with our members, uh, many of the organizations in attendance said Drupal needs to have support for content staging out of the box. We need to be able to move content, you know, uh, between environments. We need to preview things, uh, and so we raised money from uh, a large group of members. We went out into the community with an open RFP process. We worked with multiple services companies. Uh, we did everything openly and publicly in the Drupal community. So from day one, we did test-driven development in the issue queues on Drupal.org. And this is fundamental to our model. Everything we do is open source, and everything we do is about engaging with the community. Uh, we also want to engage your resources in the process so that you not only are funding these, but you're getting training and education that you can support and are enabled to implement these solutions in your organization. Uh, and so everything from the discovery through to, you know, uh, test-driven development was done openly in the community, and we were able to meaningfully and successfully solve this problem, you know, for a, 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 a very specific use case, a, uh, a single environment. So if you have, you know, a production website, we're updating a lot of content, you want to be able to preview that content in mass before you go live. Uh, this is what this solution tackled. Uh, one of our members, Pfizer, is tackling another aspect of this problem where you can move content across uh, multiple environments, you know, development, staging, and production, as well as, you know, for legal compliance purposes, be able to look at your site at a period of time in the past. And so, you know, uh, we understand that there is no one-size-fits-all solution to these problems, and what we try and do is identify uh, sort of specific key areas and use cases that organizations share that we can work together to fund. Uh, another uh, exciting area that we worked on is behavior-driven development. So this is something that we brought up uh, in 2012 at one of our member conferences. We brought in a leader from the Drupal community, a woman named Melissa Anderson, uh, known as Eliza411 on Drupal.org, and she talked uh, about the future of test-driven development and how behavior-driven development is, uh, you know, a great asset to organizations. I'm not going to go into details as to what it is, uh, but I definitely recommend you guys check it out. Uh, essentially, it, it enables you to um, involve a lot of your business stakeholders, you know, through a common language, you know, defining your requirements, uh, and also, you know, collapses your test writing process, so your requirements, much like a agile user story, end up becoming your tests that automatically run in a browser as a real user. So you say, you know, as a user in this role, I can go to this page, complete these actions, and so you, now you have a very clear requirement that you can run as a test to ensure that the development that was done was actually built to meet this requirement. And it enables more of the uh, individuals in your organization to participate in the process through this common language English statement. Uh, to automatically do that, you need to have tooling. And that's what we did. So, you know, members were super excited about this after our talks on it. We raised enough money to go out and build uh, the underlying tooling into the various different systems that are out there. We worked with a partner, uh, Capgemini gave us a team of resources, and they built out a comprehensive set of tests for Drupal.org. So while the Drupal code base has pretty comprehensive code coverage, it turns out that no one had ever written a test for Drupal.org, right? You submit a, you create a user account, you submit an issue on, on a forum or, you know. And so now we have comprehensive code coverage, and we as a community can upgrade our home on the internet uh, on the internet uh, very quickly, you know, just like most organizations want to do. So a lot of great benefit to the Drupal community as well as to the organizations that funded this. You know, that created a uh, set of examples that you can leverage and use. Uh, and we've continued to fund that this year with some exciting developments. So uh, we have an assistant that allows you to do real-time test-driven development using BDD. You know, it's literally as soon as you save a file, 
in your virtual environment. It starts parallelizing and running these tests in the background, enabling you to see you know, where, where your code is versus your business goals and objectives, um, as well as then to like integrate that with a larger environment and run them in the cloud and run a, a broader test suite. So in addition to taking on these types of initiatives, we can also help organizations to accelerate the pace of innovation in the Drupal community. I'll give you some quick examples there. Uh, we helped raise uh, around $25,000, $30,000 to support the Views and Drupal Core initiative. Uh, so that was pretty exciting. We were able to raise enough money last year so that Greg Dunlop, the configuration management initiative owner, was able to work full time on the CMI platform. This is one of the most exciting aspects of Drupal 8. Uh, what we're doing is we're enabling organizations to share these R&D costs and ensure that the future of Drupal is the best possible platform and going to meet their needs. Um, we can also, you know, we understand very much that our, our member organizations have made a massive investment in their current systems. And so we want to do what we can to help you, uh, you know, maximize and extend the life cycle of those platforms. So we can not only help you accelerate the pace of innovation to the future of Drupal, which few organizations are positioned to do, but we can also help in some cases backport some of those innovations to the current version of Drupal. And so most of Spark, which was originally a Drupal 8 initiative to make it, uh, you know, one of the most uh, user uh, friendly from an editorial and interface standpoint platforms, you were able to backport almost all of that to Drupal 7 so you could take advantage of Spark today. And so, you know, uh, that, that's a pretty key thing. It's not just about the future. Uh, there is an amazing opportunity right now that I want to make you guys aware of. Alex Pop, who is here at the uh, London camp, He's one of the four core committers in the world. I don't know if you're familiar with how Drupal works, but uh, for the core of the platform, anyone can submit a patch. Uh, Dries, Angie Byron, Nathaniel Cashpool, and Alex Pott are the four people that can determine whether or not that patch is actually contributed into the core of the platform. It's a collaborative process, with a lot of back and forth between the submitters, the group of core committers. Uh, he was formerly uh, a lead developer at a well-known consulting company doing very high profile, high scalable Drupal 7 websites. Uh, we've helped raise money so that he could focus full time working on Drupal 8. This is probably one of the single biggest and best things that we could do uh, as a community is to continue to fund amazing people like Alex that are willing to, you know, uh, sacrifice what they could be making commercially to do some awesome work here. Uh, and so if you're interested in you know, making sure that Drupal 8 is as best as possible. This is a critical time in the release cycle, and I would strongly encourage you to approach myself or him to discuss how we can help continue funding the amazing work that he's doing on the platform. So in addition to, uh, you know, these projects that we do in the community, one of the exciting things that we do is we take a lot of these best practices and principles from open source communities and we bring them to your organization. So if you think about a large organization, you know, they scale by creating silos. In many cases, you know, there are organizations like an NBC Universal, they have over 50 or 60 brands running on Drupal, from the Olympics recently to NBC News, to Bravo, Sci-Fi, Telemundo. You know, all of these organizations have different capabilities, different teams. Some of them have central shared IT systems. But in many cases, you know, uh, a technology community like Drupal is bringing them together like never before you know, helping them communicate and share information internally, break down these silos and walls. You know, it, it's not just the benefit that you can get from create, you know, communicating and collaborating with a larger world, but we're seeing that these open source practices principles are helping large organizations be significantly more effective internally. And so we've run uh, conferences, what we call Drupal at the Rock. Uh, last year we brought in Drupal leadership, the leadership across all 60 MBCU brands running Drupal, brought in industry experts on things like responsive design, and advertising, and we had a great conference, and we invited all of our LST members to participate, which for them was a unique opportunity to get insights into how a large organization adopts and rolls out technology. Um, we've also done similar things for Qualcomm, um, but you know, what we can do is we can take these ideas like hackathons and code sprints and meetups and conferences and help your organize benefit from the, you know, the same practices and principles that are helping Drupal become one of the fastest growing and most successful uh, software projects out there. Um, I mentioned this earlier, you know, one of the key things to, you know, the growth of any technology platform or the success of any individual internally is understanding what's out there. You know, I spent a lot of time focusing on Drupal. I don't always understand the pros and cons versus WordPress or .NET or the 160 other platforms that are out there, right? And 
many times I hear from the executives that we work with or the technology leadership that we work with is that they often go up against internally and have to debate and understand the merits of these systems. And so what we want to do is we want to help you be more successful in navigating your organization. And again, it's not just about technology, it's about being able to make compelling arguments. You may know that Drupal is the right tool for the job, but if you can't sell it internally and speak to its merits versus these other platforms and systems, you know, you may lose that battle to someone who, you know, it, you know, is just great at selling WordPress or another solution that may be a great technology solution but may not be the right fit for this project and problem. Uh, so a great example of that, you know, obviously we want to get more organizations to contribute to and, and, and uh, be part of open source projects. For many people that uh, requires some level of approval from your executive team. Uh, and so one of our members, Doug Gaff, the Senior Director of Technology at National Public Radio in the U.S., put together a framework and guideline, you know, that basically a process that he followed in several organizations, including NPR, to secure that buy-in and approval. And it's basically, you know, here's the argument and rationale I took, you know, here's the arguments that they're probably going to come back at you and the things that you should say. It doesn't answer your specific need and problem, but it gives you a, a great guide and process by which you can follow. Um, so I wanted to leave a little bit of time for some questions. We have about 10 minutes. Uh, you can find out more information online at largescaledrupal.com. Uh, I encourage you to reach out to me personally. Uh, I, I love talking about this stuff. Is a, you know, uh, well, I'd love to see you guys join the organization, support Drupal, get more engaged in communities. Uh, we really want to just help organizations you know, get a more meaningful investment out of their technology platform. So, thank you guys, and uh, I'm happy to take any questions you might have. <laughs>